hard. We, we had to, uh, to be good as the first one. And I hope we did it. I don't know if you want to get on that. And I, we had, you know, we, we have an amazing team that's working together, Arabs and Jews, um, just together, and actors, and not just actors, also in the production and in the, all in, in, the, in the locations. And it was an amazing experience as the first one. And, but now we had a, a different director, Rotem Shamir, and, and we earned a good friend that uh, really, you know, he did his things and we collaborated together and it was an amazing time. And I think, I think we are now starting to write the third season, so Rotem, we have to sign you as well, please. Okay, I wanna move on to you. I wanted to know, was there anything in particular uh, when you wrote and shot the second season uh, that you had in mind that you wanted to sort of come through um, that perhaps either didn't come through for the first season or that you learned from the first season wanted to make sure that this was going to be a part of the second season? Well, I'm, gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell here a kind of a secret that when we finished the shooting of the first season, not even the writing, but the shooting of the first season, we didn't know that there would be a second season. So it's not that we plan in advance that on the second season we're going to have the, the shape or the, the son of the shape that uh, the one grew up on the first season. Um, I think that you know the theme that we have is the same theme more or less, meaning it's the circle of violence that never ends. And even if you kill the bad guy, there will always be another bad guy. This is A, and B, that especially in our neighborhood, in the Middle East, in Israel, every time that you think that you got to the real bad guy, there's always one worse. <laughs> and I think that this is the new al Makhlusi guy. So you already understand now that it's not only about Hamas, but he has some other inspirations and other plans, and we will meet him on the second, third, fourth episode. And I guess it was a kind of a challenge to show the different versions of the, of the bad guy, the different versions of the black. And, it, and this is the Middle East at the end of the day, and I think this is what we try to do. Rotem, um, I'm wondering, I know that you were um, involved with um, Hakufi. Am I getting this right? With uh, Prisoners of War, if anyone... Um, it's, a, it's a very famous mix. It's, I'm not involved in that. Okay. It's a show called Hostages. Hostages. by in Hebrew, so people get them mixed together. But yes. Sorry, my, my mistake. It's, it's, it happens to everybody. I wonder what it was like for you to join the show um, with the success that it's had with your, with your past on other shows. How was it different for you? And were you worried at all about joining a show like this? Um, well, first of all, of course, I had my worries. Um, Leo is sitting on my mic. <laughs> don't go there. Yeah. I was there for a minute. Don't, don't go there. Um, I'm not. <laughs> You're still not there. I know you. Stop. <laughs> Um, so, of course, to meet these guys and, and uh, in the limelight where, where they were when I came into the show was stressful for me because, you know, I had, as you said, um, there were big expectations and anticipations for the second season, but I was um, humbled and amazed of, of how welcoming they were. Um, immediately we clicked uh, creatively and personally. It was just uh, a great connection, and from the get-go, like from the first second we started working, um, we didn't even like have one moment of, of bad energy between us, and that's for me was the greatest gift that they could give me to just come in and do my work, um, and, and and give you know to show my my perspective and my angle, and they just you know brought me in so gracefully. So thank you guys. I want to add here something to that. Uh, there's a group of uh, Israelis here will understand, a group of chairs here on the stage. 
but Rotem was a Golanchi, you know, no is a Golanchi, we still love him. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Leticia, um, I'm wondering what it was like for you on set. One of the things that has come up again and again um, in many of the articles about Fauda is how well it was received, surprisingly, by many people who perhaps the creators weren't expecting it to play so well. I'm talking about Arab countries and even uh, in, in, um, in the territories. I'm wondering, what was it like for you, your experience? Is that the kind of uh, reception that you saw from your friends, your relatives, or your fans? Uh, what was it like for you? First, uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm French. Yes. <laughs> and on 190 countries in the world, friends still don't have it. So the reaction of my friends and my relatives is nothing. <laughs> yes. But I hope they will have it soon. Not that we'll have it soon, it's coming. Um, so the, the reactions I have, uh, personally, all over the world is more about Americans, mainly, jumping on me <laughs> in several countries saying, wow, you're about that. So this, I really get it, and uh, this is how we see that the show is really a big hit everywhere. Um, and I know, because I'm half Lebanese, that my, um, I, I heard from some people there that the show is also becoming a hit there. In Lebanon. I was a bit surprised and happy. Uh, and it's a, it's a good news. Um, I'm wondering what was it like on the set for the second season. I know that the first season everything was so new, but I'm wondering, you come back after the success of the first season, what was that like? It was, at the same time, um, better and worse. <laughs> How so? As Leo said, it was really stressful. Stressing. Stressful? Whatever. Um, because we are receiving, all of us, uh, messages from many countries saying, wow, well, guys, we wait for you for season two. So we were all a bit stressed and tense to, as he said, to be as, I mean, as good as, you know, <laughs> season one. And it was better because we loved each other a lot. And it was really amazing to be together. The locations, you've seen some of them, are amazing. So it was, um, it was, I don't know, a very big pleasure to keep going with our characters. And new things are happening, be ready. Safi, <laughs> um, I'm wondering for you, what was it like to work on this show, specifically uh, the reaction from within Israel, but also from outside of Israel? I I'm hearing uh, that uh, the show has sparked uh, renewed interest within Israel to learn more Arabic, and that Fauda is being used now uh, in the Israeli military uh, to teach soldiers how to speak Arabic the right way, with a better slang, up to snuff. I'm wondering, what was it like for you? First of all, I wasn't mentioned that in the first season we were shooting during an uh, operation that was happening in Israel, and we actually, you know, we found ourselves in uh, many moments uh, stuck together in a room while this was all flying above our heads, which is quite interesting, you know, Arab uh, actors and Israeli actors being together. Now, as for the, first, the second season, um, you know, it's, you, on one hand you have something that is very familiar, you know, people that you know, actors that you know. Uh, you know, there's kind of a group uh, thing, uh, vibe that, you know, you see it obviously on the second season, you already see it with the first episode that there's kind of a vibe between the guys. Uh, concerning the Arabic, it's, it's amazing. We, because the first season has had a big impact about the will, and especially in Israel, especially not only the military, I get a lot of feedbacks from teachers in schools saying that kids uh, would like, want to speak to learn the Arabic, and one of the ways they study, they learn it with a song, Tamali Ma'at, which was you know, shown in the first season. So it's amazing, because uh, me personally, I think, and I know, Avi and Leo also that people in Israel should speak the language, the Arabic language. It should be mandatory. It's it's a great way to understand, you know, people language is something that you know overcomes everything. So uh, so it's good. It has a good effect. <laughs> Leo, I'm wondering 
one of the things that we talked about when we uh, when we were uh, when I was writing this story is you talked about um, the fact that you took extreme sort of measures in terms of making sure that everything stayed authentic. Um, talk to me about the process. One of the things that I remember uh, talking about with you and the producer of the show was the fact that you made sure that the Arab-speaking roles went to Arab actors and the Jewish-speaking roles went to the Israeli actors and that you even made sure that the, uh, the dialects, the different dialects, were, were authentic and the right ones. Uh, was this because you had a hunch that it was going to be shown in other countries and you wanted to make sure that it didn't, you know, the people got the right um, sort of uh, accents? Or, or was this just a, 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 an idea of wanting to be authentic to the material? I think, as Abby said, we thought that nobody will see this show. You know, <laughs> just my mother and Abby's mother. Uh, so we didn't thought about the accents and the people all over the world who see it. And really, we just thought about ourselves. And but my mom thinks that it's too loud. So she's, <laughs> yeah. she's not watching it anymore. Um, but for us, for Avi and, and me, we are. I think the truth. We are going with our truth. We are. We're going very strongly, very hard, and we want to see to see and show people the truth. And one part of it, it's the right dialect, it's the right actors, it's the, even the how it's written on the, you know, the, the signs in the streets. Avi's, you know, every morning came to the set, looked at the, at the signs, if it's written good, if it's, it's looked good, and even how they dress, everything. We had to be very specific every day because we want to show the truth. And, and, and how it really is. And for us, I think, as an actor as well, to, you know, to talk in the right dialect, in, in, in specific Arabic, it's hard, but, but this is what makes it very interesting. And, and, and we'll, we, we, we really like to do it like that. Rona. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Wanted to know from you, first of all, this, uh, this show has obviously put you on an international stage. What that's been like for you as an actress. I know that Israel is a great place to sort of hone your craft, but if you really want to make it on an international stage, that's not an easy thing to do coming from Israel. Some people have managed. Um, Gal Gadot is doing really well with this. Oh, oh. Uh, are there any aspirations to, um, to follow in her footsteps? Uh, yeah, I think more so as a, as a human, I think that the show, the fact that it got such a international stage for people to, to get to see a glimpse of, of how really complicated this situation is, um, and getting the response of, we had no idea that, that it's like this. And I think that's, first of all, that's what's most inspiring, I think, being an Israeli living there and experiencing the, the, the toughness and the complexity of it. And yeah, as an actress, I think Netflix really put us in such a crazy place. I don't think any of us thought that we get here and it's it's incredible it's such a, an amazing opportunity and yeah <laughs> Thank you, um, I'm wondering I know that you did music for the show first of all I'm wondering whether the composition had to change for the second season because it was more hyped up or and the second thing I wanted to know is, uh, I wanted maybe perhaps you can explain to people here what Fauda is like, uh, how it was received in Israel. One of the things that we're hearing a lot is that it's one of the most beloved shows there, and not just by Israelis, but both by Israelis and Palestinians, which is one of the reasons why I think it became such a phenomenon. I uh, was wondering if you could tell people here what it's like when you talk about Fauda in Israel. I'm, I'm not sure that I am. Um I have the the right answer for that, but, but when it's it's a big uh, it's a big hit, people are really um, um, feeling connected to it. Uh, it took everyone by surprise how, how much it's uh, it's a really good uh, um, 
piece of entertainment and has a real um, side of it that is a reality and it's, it's crazy to, to even uh, think that that's how things go. Um, but uh, basically people from all over the world are responding to it very well, hopefully for the second season as well. And the music did not, did change. It went up a notch a little bit, like, the, like I think the second season is um, dramatically. Um, so we pushed it, we're using the same <coughs> good elements from the first season and we pushed it uh, a little bit further to match the, the story, the drama, the drama and the visuals that are also uh, moving forward. Uh, we're going to do some questions from the audience. Um, where's the microphone? Do we have someone with a question? Please raise your hand if you have any questions for our panelists. Right over there. Um, I would just like to make a comment about the reality of the situation on the ground, which this uh, episode portrays in other episodes as well. Uh, the 29th of November is coming up, which is the 70th anniversary of the UN partition plan, uh, Resolution 181. And uh, it's interesting to think about what would have actually happened if that partition plan would have worked and there would not have been the conflict we've had all these years since then. Um, on the 27th, we're gonna have a, a, a program about this. And I think it's important that this, that this film today that you showed was very important. And it's good that this, this gets viewers in not only in Israel, but other parts of the world. And thank you for everybody that's involved. the question. Yeah, there we go. Right there. Sorry. <laughs> My question? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, it's an outstanding show, and uh, all of our uh, love for the, for the cast and everybody here who's produced it. Um, I'm curious about Doron's character for a moment, and, and really the entire anti-terrorist uh, team that's so embedded in the uh, culture and the language and the norms and the practices of being in the shtachim and being in the areas where you're, where you're doing this urban hand-to-hand -hand combat in reality, what an impact do you think that has on, let's say, Doron at the very end of last season, when he has to make a prayer right as he's about to be killed, the first prayer that comes out of his mouth is one that's in Arabic. And then afterwards, everyone here who saw the show, of course, knows he was instructed by the terrorists to pray in, in Ivrit, say, and then he, then he said Shema. So his first instinct was to, to pray in Arabic. What impact do you think when, you're, when uh, this character is so embedded in the local culture, how does he, is there a sort of a blurring of the lines in terms of identifying with the local Arabic culture versus the Jewish culture that's his source? I think, yeah, thank you. I think Doron, um, feel much better in the Arab side, you know, because he don't have his wife, his kids, anything. No, really, he just himself, he can, he can be joyful, he can be funny, he can be, he, he really lives there because this is the place that he feel comfortable. And as for undercover soldiers, uh, in order to be a good undercover soldier, you have to love the language, the Arabic, and you have to love the culture and actually you have to be part of it and to let it embed in your soul and so for those people it's um, um, from time to time they think and they feel better when they are when they are on the other side Lior. yeah Okay, Can you tell yeah. us how, how close to reality Doron's reality is to actual events? Because you actually came from that past. You were in a unit like this in your military service. I'm wondering how close do you think their reality is to the real thing? I think that it's, it's a drama, it's a TV drama, but uh, I think what we're talking about, it's about the mental price that those people are paying 
And I think it's the same, the same mental price that Doron pays. All the people that were or still in this unit are paying, and this is actually what we wanted to show as well. Hi, this question is for uh, Avi and Lior. It's, it's about the creation of it. What made you decide to use one director throughout season one, and then I'm assuming Rotem directs all of season two? And the second question is, how did you two guys meet? <laughs> we met in a bar. <laughs> there was no, a microphone we actually did. involved. Uh, but it was uh, at the age that it was illegal to drink. I mean, it was, it was before 18 in Israel, and I think that this is where we've met. Uh, yeah, we were 16 and, and we lived in the same city, Jerusalem, and actually we went out to the same clubs, bars, places, and then we met in the army, and um, after a few years we met again in some place that we can't talk about, but um, and then actually Avi asked me an amazing question. It was in the, I, I will tell it was in the West Bank somewhere. And he told me if I have a dream, the most amazing question that someone asked me in my life, and it's changed my life because we started to talk about the dreams that we have and we share it and we wanted to write something. And, and since then we are collaborating and I see him more than I see my wife. <laughs> uh, um, about the director. Um, <laughs> what, Alon, what? <laughs> so about the director, I just want to say that uh, in Israel it's less common to switch directors or, or to replace them in the middle of the season, but hey, we got the best one in the world. I mean, we wouldn't replace him for n ever. Is there time for another question? Yes. This is the last question, so make it good. Uh oh, the pressure's on. <laughs> um, I just want to say you all did a great job and um, uh, it's rare that I get excited about a show, so it's really cool to find something that's engaging. Um, on a lighter note, I just wanted to know who was in charge of the casting, because I know it's very important to have chemistry. It has to all kind of work together. So who was in charge of the casting, and how did you all hear about it? Were you friends? Did, uh, you know, how did you discover the role? Uh, casting was a combined effort of uh, mine with the, the casting um, director agent, casting agent, casting director. Uh, Ruti Bloom, who did a great job finding us uh, some of this new staff. We, we used, of course, everybody uh, from the first season, and our greatest challenge was to find uh, the new side, the new Palestinian side, uh, new actors. Um, some of them have little to no experience, uh, but we brought them on as a part of this authenticity uh, subject that uh, Avi uh, talked about. It was very important for us to portray uh, these people at their the right age and and to look as close as possible to reality. It, the, the amazing thing is that these guys um, that do those things, they, they are all 21 to 25 year old boys, I guess. Um, and we were looking for a group of those. Um, of course, Avi and Lior are very involved in all the decisions. Uh, we had to match um, the Israeli side with the Palestinian side. We did a lot of uh, matching uh, casting uh, interviews. And that's how we found them. All right. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank Lior, thank Avi, Rotem, Leticia, Rona, thank Lee, you. Safi, and Gilad. And the second season will be coming soon, so check your, uh, check your Netflix. And also, you can check what the wrap for the exact date that's coming up soon.